Greetings everyone, and welcome to the Planet Ripple Logs. This time we'll do a chapter breakdown of Log 5, Pieces. Gonna start by reading this info dump about Zoots. Zoots are machines built for a wide range of uses. The most common are utility vehicles used by civilians to transport goods, and some are built for undersea exploration. Common features include compact, roundish bodies, usually designed to carry one person, short limbs, large hands and feet, and in some cases, treads or wheels. Battle zoots are used by both a navy and pirates like the Barracuda Gang. These tend to be larger and more sluggish than civilian zoots. Like cyborgs with cuff implants, many zoots feature similar sockets with interchangeable limbs, making it relatively simple to find new uses for them when those parts eventually break down. So that thematically gives Minnow something in common with these machines. Just like her cuffs enable her to, you know, pop off limbs and swap them for new ones, that's a very common feature in the sorts of machines that Andrea and eventually Minnow would use. Speaking of Andrea, here's her zoot. 74D-P013, Tadpole. A lightweight paper unit originally built for excavation and customized by Andrea in her spare time. This type of zoot features detachable arms and legs and doubles as a mini-sub. Now, if that collapse at the start of the book went a little differently, this feature could have saved Andrea. Say, just an arm or a leg was caught in the ruins as they were collapsing. She could have detached it and floated away. Unfortunately, her entire zoot was wedged in. We open with a Bellina on the surface, a couple of its bays open for traders, and in just a couple days, Minnow's adapted well to her new job. It's nothing glamorous, but she seems to be doing pretty well. The story could probably end right here, if not for some pirate meddling. This smaller ship is based on a barrel eye fish, which has this glass-like head where you can see its entire brain, and they almost look like giant eyes, but of course they're not. So I thought it'd be cool if, on a mechanical equivalent, those were some kind of cloaking field generators. And oh, would you look at that, the pirate's first victim is Kelsey. And while he fails to raise the alarm, he is able to reach his auntie. Yeah, this person again. Now, this is an easy detail to miss, but those spinning flashing lights in this corner you know, indicate that by the time Minnow got down there, Christina had raised the alarm. For new readers, I, I often hear that this is one of the most anger-inducing bits in the entire book, her just looking at Minnow and going, He didn't need to check in today. He only came to see how you're doing. This is your fault, just like everything else. Now, of course, it isn't. That's not fair of her to say, but Minnow is very prone to internalizing words like that, especially at this stage. The pirates at this point are still very mysterious, because our only exposure to them is Hack's little troop, his soldiers. We don't know if all the pirates are like this, or if it's just their soldiers, just how vast this enterprise is. But given how incredibly common cyborgs are in this world, with ones like Minnow being some of the tamer examples, I tried to communicate just in these designs that, no, they're not wearing armor, these are their bodies. They're dehumanized by design, very little of their original human flesh showing through. Like this guy down here? That's not a helmet, that's his face. He lost his actual face, and now he's just a weird robot cyclops. I mean like an actual cyclops, not Captain Nate. I had so much fun choreographing this scene, just showing how smart Minnow is, how she can improvise in a pinch. Little details like, oh, these boxes are empty so I can throw them further and they probably won't hurt those people as bad. It is funny seeing how apologetic she is about it. Minnow is by no means a pacifist. She will fight. She will throw hands. But she does it as gently as she can. <laughs> You can even see this contradiction reflected visually in Minnow herself and this machine. It's so big and bulky and could probably hit you really hard, yet its body language matches her expressions. It's even kind of hunching over to seem smaller. And since all we can see of her is her little face poking out, it looks like this thing is her, it's her body. Of course it's not, she's controlling it with her hands like you would a utility vehicle, but it foreshadows the kind of relationship she'll have with other machines in the future that are more typical of the series. But this one is so endearing, I sometimes wonder, what if she kept it? What if she just went around the world, smacking pirates upside the head with this thing, and just upgrade it here and there? She probably wouldn't get far, but it's fun to think about. Overall, it's one of the more iconic scenes in Planet Ripple. It's Minnow's first fight, and she's doing pretty well. Enough to force Hack to come out and confront her himself, and... What is this garbage? She, uh, she caught us with her trousers down, sir. 
Well, Min was on a roll, and this guy doesn't look too much tougher than the other pirates, so she just goes for it. And, oops. I've said many times in conversation that I draw my books as if they're storyboards. As if you're actually watching an animation, a movie, a show, a video game cutscene, literally any visual medium that isn't static. And you might think that'd just be a basic principle of making comics, that that'd be really common, right? Not always. Depending on things like the page count, you know, what, what format it is, what type of story, you just might not have space to simulate a dolly zoom or a slow motion scene like this. Some people will tell you that slow motion scenes are difficult to draw. They're really not. It's just basic sleight of hand, like drawing the same thing from multiple angles, or one big panel with lots of empty space like on the previous page. Don't include any sound effects or dialogue unless you have some way to simulate that it's being slowed down. Don't include any speed lines. That way things feel like they're frozen in place. Maybe to saturate the colors or make the lighting more ominous. Now as far as pirates go, Hack is one of the lowest body counts. That's kind of his thing. But this was a rare occasion where someone made him frustrated enough to have an intent to kill. And if Minnow had normal arms or legs, she probably would be dead already. And seeing this humble warrior in pieces, like the title, for whatever reason, or even multiple reasons, is enough to shake Hack to his core. Why? We'll get into that someday. But that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me today. If you want to support what I do, check out my books on Amazon and Niche.io. Write a review if you enjoy them. I just released Volume 8. There's also my Patreon page where you can get videos a week early, exclusive content, a patron-exclusive Discord server, art streams, the works. Next time we'll cover Log 6, Cycle. Toodles!